but let's start out with um, demand projections this morning. It's supposed to be 83,000 megawatts or so. Uh, it, it ended up being 74,000 megawatts. What, what was the big difference there? Why was it so far off? So, you know, the, the predicting exactly the demand level on a, on a given period of time in the future is one of the most difficult things that we have to do at ERCOT because there's a lot of dependencies. There's dependencies on exactly how the weather rolls in. And, and with a with a winter event like this, there's a lot more variability to the temperature gradients across the state, meaning there's some parts of the state that are really, really cold, like up in the north and in the central Texas area, and then areas in the south that are actually quite a bit warmer. This morning down in Brownsville, it was near 50 degrees. So where those lines get drawn make a really big difference in driving how much demand, whereas in the summer, when it's, you know, that heat dome that was sitting over Texas, it sat pretty consistently over the state for days and days and weeks and weeks. So it's a lot harder to pinpoint exactly where that line is going to be. And that makes a big difference in driving that demand forecast. I wanted to ask you, was it was it that temperature difference across the state or was it industrial customers turning off or all of the above that, that really helped this morning or what? It was all of the above. We we absolutely saw a response from industrial customers, as well as we expect from a lot of the consumer customers. We know that retailers put out a notice to consumers to conserve it if they could during those early morning hours. And as we were watching the, the demand start to grow in the morning, early, early this morning, we saw that demand start to slow, the growth start to slow right as we got into those conservation periods. And that was a combination of industrial businesses, as well as consumers responding to that conservation call. Pablo, tomorrow, I, I think at 8 a.m., uh, the projection is 86,000 megawatts uh, for demand supplies is what, 82,000? Did I get those right? It, it seems like there's a really close uh, uh, numbers in there. That's right. It's looking very tight tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's a little bit of a different situation. Tomorrow, it's going to be colder. So that cold that cold swath that really wasn't down in the valley today is going to be down all the way through the valley tomorrow. So where it was 50 degrees in Brownsville, it could be more than 20 degrees colder tomorrow morning. In Houston, it's forecasted to be 10 degrees colder tomorrow morning than it was this morning. So it, we're going to see that deep freeze really take hold across most of the state tomorrow morning. So that's going to drive demand up quite a bit. In addition, tomorrow's not a holiday. So we may start to see that demand come together at a more concentrated time when people are getting ready for school and getting ready for work. That tends to be a, a larger and more intense peak. And that's why the demand is so much higher forecasted for tomorrow than it is for today. Talk about batteries. Are they playing a role at all in helping keep the grid stable, Pablo? They sure are. Batteries, which are the newest technology that are uh, have come onto the ERCOT grid, have been performing great. We've got just under 5,000 megawatts of batteries in service right now. We're utilizing all of them throughout the day, and uh, and they've been performing great. In, in addition, I, I want to point out, the whole generation fleet has really been performing well so far during this winter event. The traditional thermal plants are performing really well. The uh, renewables, we've got, you know, we've got very little icing on windmills. They've been running it, you know, as, as much as the wind is available for them, they've been running. And so we've been seeing really good performance on the generator fleet. And when you couple that with the great response that we saw from Texans this morning in conservation, that combination is what's going to help us get through another day like tomorrow. I want to ask you about the root of all this, which which is natural gas, especially for the thermal plants there. We, we talked about in the podcast uh, how, how your uh, predecessor tried to get a, a gas desk there at uh, at ERCOT. Is, is the lack of one, is that impacting operations at all? Is it making it harder to, to really keep an eye on things or what? We're, we're having great coordination with our gas uh, pipeline uh, partners. We've been uh, having phone calls every day this week, Jason, where we've been, if there's any maintenance issues that are going on on the pipeline system that could affect gas. So we're not, we're not missing anything in terms of what's needed operationally in order to keep the grid running reliably between our gas partners and between the electric uh, companies that are generating electricity. Do you expect another conservation appeal on Wednesday morning? You know, we'll have to take a look at that. We're, we're going to start to see some warm-ups begin uh, on Wednesday. We'll have to see whether or not that's going to be the case for the Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning could be another very cold day. A uh, factor that may be different for Wednesday could be the amount of wind that's available. Early forecasts show that there, the wind was going to pick back up later uh, over the evening tomorrow night. And if the wind stays up, then we may be fine on Wednesday morning and not need a conservation. But we're going to keep a close eye on that. And you we're going to always of... be communicating to you and to... Uh, and we'll also always be communicating to you and to all Texans 
through our Texas Advisory Notification System. So you can go to the ERCOT's website, forward slash TXANS, and there's going to be information there about the state of the grid, any kind of conservation notices, and even um, energy saving tips if uh, folks are looking for those too. A couple last questions. Uh, a, a lot of anxiety, obviously, about the power grid. You, you know that very well. What's your message to Texans right now about how it's going down there? I want them to know that the grid is performing well. Everybody is focused on ensuring that the power is going to stay on. Reliability is number one, number two, and number three at our cut. It's the first, second, and third thing we think about when it comes to anything that's going on in our everyday. And remember, we're we're uh, we're down there running the grid 24-7, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. This is what we're thinking about. Really good investments and changes have been made that are keeping the grid reliable, which is what we're experiencing today. And I want Texans to know that we're going to continue to do that and do everything we can to keep the power running for them. Pablo, when will you be able to breathe easier, do you think? Well, it looks like uh, we get uh, back to some much warmer temperatures Wednesday, Thursday afternoon. Uh, and then it looks looking ahead, it looks like we're going to have some moderate temperatures for a little while. So uh, if we, as we get through the, you know, Wednesday morning, I think everybody can uh, breathe a little bit easier, know that we got through this winter weather event, this cold snap, and uh, look forward to enjoying a, a mild winter. You guys said you set an unofficial record today and you're thinking you might set up another one tomorrow can you hit me, tell me that one more time yeah that's correct jason we we actually set an unofficial record this morning for all-time winter peak just under seventy six thousand megawatts the last winter peak was set on december 23rd uh the christmas before last during winter storm elliott tonight we expect to break that record again and again tomorrow morning we expect to break that record so it is getting colder tonight and into tomorrow which is why we've got that conservation appeal. But we are doing everything to make sure that the grid is going to stay reliable, the power is going to stay on, and everyone's going to be able to be safe and, and comfortable in their homes. Pablo and Trudy, thank you all so much. Good luck to you all down there. We'll be thinking about you. All right. Thanks a lot, Jason.